Hello everyone, I'm Nicholas and welcome to the first episode of DevOps Concepts, a series of videos where I do my best to explain concepts in the field of DevOps as clearly and concisely as possible. Today we're going to talk about stateless servers uh, and to do that first we need to say a few words about what a stateful server is. Uh, so let's take an example here, we have a client browser and a database and we want to build some nice new application in between, for example, a, a web web store where you can buy a bunch of products. Um, and and to do that, uh, we need some kind of login system. And to, to log in, uh, you enter some kind of username and password in the client browser. Uh, the application is going to then take the username and password, pass it on to the database to check that, that it corresponds to the to to some user um, and that it's the correct password. Hopefully, it's hashed or, or there's some other secure mechanism to to make sure that the password is not clear text in the database. But um, anyway, it's it's going to make sure that uh, that that they match and that it belongs to a user account. Then the da database is going to say that uh, the username and password combination was okay. The application is going to to store some kind of key. Uh, this is some sort of session where the the user is identified and uh, and we have some kind of probably some long string of, of characters uh, that are then passed along um, passed along here to the to the client the client browser and the client browser keeps a copy there and after that we're in this situation where the the, uh, the client uh, has has the key it knows the session uh, the server knows the session and uh, this is the point here so the the server now has state. Um, this is why we call it a stateful server. Now the subsequent requests, uh, the client browser is going to pass the key. The server is going to check against that key and uh, and it's going to recognize the, new, the user immediately without having to make any kind of database calls or, or anything like that. Though, of course, in, in most use cases, we're still going to need to access the database. If, For example, if we stick with the example of this being a web store, uh, we're going to want to to um, make database requests to probably get some products, search for some products, or or something similar. We might want to store some other things as well. Uh, if we're uh, <laughs> again a web store where you buy a bunch of products, you probably want to have some kind of shopping cart, and and on a stateful server, you might implement it in a way where you keep this shopping cart also in uh, in the server's memory instead of, of making or leaving traces of it in the database or keeping the whole shopping cart in the database. And so the, in this case, the shopping cart, the whole user session and everything that's tied to it is kept in the in the server's memory. And your, your web store grows, you get more clients, what do you do? Uh, well, what happens, the server uh, starts having a lot lot more of those sessions uh, they all consume some kind of resources they consume memory and and, uh, and computing power in general and well this is this is one way to scale but but it's going to reach a, a limit at some point and uh, the natural evolution of this is is then to split this into two stateful servers and so this way uh, you have some kind of load balancer here in the middle that I'm I'm omitting from this picture, but uh, say half of the clients are are redirected to one server and the other half are redirected to another server. This splits the load evenly. Uh, they still use the same database, but but the servers aren't as as congested. But one client is still always tied to one server. Um, this client here can't all of a sudden between requests start uh, start making requests here because the, the his whole session is tied to the server. The server has it in memory. Well, the server doesn't. And in case of a failover, for any reason this server goes down, the session of this user goes down with it because it's not stored in the database. It's stored in this server's memory. This means that the, the, in most cases, or in this example, the client will, uh, or the user will get probably logged out and, and just have to restart again, and add all his items to the shopping cart. Worst case scenario, he he won't be bothered to, to add all those items again, and he just browse somewhere else and be frustrated, go to your competitor or or something like that. Well, enter stateless servers. I kind of hinted towards it earlier, but uh, 
because the the session and the shopping cart and everything was being held inside the server and not in the database the server going down means that the that the session is destroyed well uh, in the stateless server typically in, the, in these kinds of situations you would keep uh, both kind of the key the authentication token or something like that for the user and every and, and everything uh, related to his session like the shopping cart inside the, the database so that uh, the, uh, the kind of the application has no state it doesn't really matter if this client is making the request to this this server or this one and so the same example here with failover if this server would fail you could just start redirecting all the all the client requests uh, from from these browsers here without interrupting their session or, or their shopping experience or whatever and in fact the because of that that idea of being able to to make requests uh, from one client to to any of the the application servers, the picture kind of looks like this actually. So instead of just this client always making the request to the same server, it's going to switch, and and uh, you can just kind of scale the number of these servers on on the fly uh, using some kind of orchestration system, and uh, and and we'll have some load balancer here and and just scale this as you go and basically if there if there's no nobody using your application or just a, a handful of users you can have only one server running and as soon as you start getting more requests you you uh, get more more servers up just dynamically on the fly uh, that's that's uh, the gist gist of it basically if you understand this main concept that the server has no no real state then and that's what we talk about most of the time when we talk about stateless servers and the scaling it enables uh thanks to thanks to the lack of state uh of course then we can get uh get pedantic and for example talk about caching a state uh i wouldn't say that in this context caching would not be considered state it's not a bad idea to cache cache uh some kind of request in your application server so if you keep getting the same product every time you don't have to hit database every single time why not cache it does it's still going to work if the server goes down or if you want to take it down or you want to upgrade it or, or whatnot 